This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Linda McKenna with me and Dr. Mark Zuback. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks we, for having me. We are here Thanks. to talk Thanks about for uh, us. Smith Falls is welcoming. Uh, you put together a committee and it's called Smith Falls Welcomes Ukraine. And actually, Mark, I'm going to let you start. Sure. Well, I am a member of the steering committee, Smith Falls Welcomes Ukraine, as is Linda. And we have um, uh, a welcome today uh, to start off on, on a, this is a really important issue, okay? Bringing Ukrainians to Canada and bringing them safely to um, Smith Falls, we feel is utterly urgent. So uh, I'm the Polish speaker as well. So I'm going to welcome anybody who's listening here. Um, Jeśli są ludzie w naszej okolicy, którzy rozmawiają po ukraińsku lub po polsku, my was witamy. Słuchajcie, my was potrzebujemy. Zawsze mamy miejsce dla ochotników. Proszę się zgłosić do naszego komitetu. Dziękujemy. So what I did was I welcomed listeners uh, that speak Ukrainian and Polish to this uh, interview, and I asked them to volunteer. Thank you very much for doing that. The, the, what's going on in the Ukraine right now is horrendous. It's terrible. People have got no homes. They don't have a roof over their head. They don't even have their land. They're, they have to leave, and uh, Canada is accepting a lot, a lot of people. We've got to help them. We've got to help put, put a roof over their head. We've got to welcome them. How are we going to do that? We, you put together a group just three weeks ago, and I mean, the bottom line is people want to help, right, Linda? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Mark just has some stats that he'd like to share with us, just so we have a better understanding of what we're dealing with and the number of people who are displaced. Indeed. So, I mean, it always starts with the why, and, and there's uh, an enormous why when it comes to this horrible conflict that's happening in the Ukraine. Um, you know, not that long ago, our mayor raised the Ukrainian flag in front of the town hall um, as a statement that our town is certainly supporting as much as we can, you know, on a moral morale level what's happening. But, you know, our committee is doing a little bit more than that. Um, let me just read off some statistics that I think most of us are aware of. You know, there's been at least 10,000 civilian deaths um, at this point that have been at least reported. We know that there's bombings of shelters, train stations. You know, there's there's mass graves. I mean, the, the story here is horrible. And what's even more horrible about the Ukrainian conflict is that it's only six weeks old. This is a very new conflict. And so um, I took the time to look at statistics of displaced persons um, over the last 50, 60 years, really since World War II, to see proportionately where we were even at with the number of people. And there just is no conflict uh, from 1940 right through to this time that has displaced what we now know is 4.5 million Ukrainians are now in not in the Ukraine. They've actually been displaced to Europe. And statistically, there's another 6 million that have been displaced from their homes within the Ukraine, but their homes are gone. So we're talking about 10 million people that don't have an address anymore. Um, nothing compares to that, really. And so the urgency of what we need to do here in Canada, and especially in Smith Falls, is really, really high. Um, there's two and a half million people that are sitting in Poland that weren't there two months ago. Um, so my parents you know, went through this in World War II. Um, they came to Canada. Um, they settled here and, you know, it's part of our, let's say, generational story that it went well for us and for our family. So there's nothing better that I can think of than for us as a community to unite together and be also part of another family's story of how they came to Canada. And Linda's going to share a lot more about that. Um, you know, right now, I believe there's something in the order of 6,000 refugees that have come to Canada, 6,000, 8,000, those are primarily, Kathy, people that have been invited by Ukrainian Canadian families. So the visa process has been made easier, um, but um, those, are, those are really Ukrainian Canadian families that have brought people over. There's over 100,000 visa applications right now uh, that the Minister Sean Fraser of Immigration has pending. Um, you know, that's, that's just an enormous number of people that they need to process. Um, and only some 20,000 have been actually approved. So, you know, 
it, we felt it really important that we're ready for for these people to arrive um, safely in in our in our community. The governments are are kicking in. The provincial and federal governments uh, have come up with, in the last couple of weeks with you know very positive support uh, uh, plans. Um, you know, prioritizing visas. Um, you know, looking at providing key services in health, education, possibilities of housing, job placements. You know, these are really important things that the government uh, is stepping in to do. And certainly as a committee in Smith Falls, we'll, we have members that will be looking to tap into those resources and make their transition as easy as possible. So that's my uh, background. I, I imagine being part of somebody's, you know, history, you know, in 10, 20, 30 years from now, you know, that you help somebody come to Canada and get a new home and a new start because these people, it's like they, like you say, they don't even have an address. They don't, their house is gone. Their, their, their land is gone. They don't have an address. And to be able yeah. to, to help somebody here in Smith Falls, what a wonderful legacy on yourself and, and, you know, just to help people right now too. So that's what we're looking for, Linda, is for people to help in Smith Falls. Yes, absolutely. We're putting a call out to begin with for host families, those that are willing to open their homes and their hearts to these people that are coming. Um, we're going to have in place um, an application that they can fill out uh, when they inquire as to how they can help, whether it be hosting or volunteering in other areas, which we'll get into. Primary right now, as I say, though, is host families, getting them set up getting them um, vetted so that they, you know, have have their uh, background checks done. The application is there. We have it on file. We know about them so that when we have Ukrainian people coming, the um, depending on, you know, what's going to be the best suit with the host family and we're going to try to match them up so it's going to be um, work out the best for both parties. So if you are interested in looking into this, you know, if what Marcus said and what you see happening um, right before our eyes just resonates within your being that you want to help, then please reach out to us. We're in the learning stages as well. We're just a group of started with seven. We're now nine that came together three weeks ago was our first meeting. And we sat down and just, you know, threw out what what was all on all of our hearts is we want to help these people. And so we've gone from there and we're getting set up and established and, and looking now for people that want to step in and, uh, and help with that. So we do have a um, email address as well as our Facebook page, which I'm going to give to, to you now. And um, our email address is, let me just find it here. Um, our Facebook page is Smith Falls Welcomes Ukraine, and our um, email address, I thought I had it down on this, is um, Smith Falls Welcomes Ukraine at gmail.com. And if they, you know, reply to either of those, we'll, we will get back to them and, and send them an application. You know, if they have questions, we can get back and answer those questions. So, um, that is helping and that's going to be the first if we get host families set up then we can go through that process there'll also be a home visit where we'll sit down with them there'll be someone sitting down with them and going through and answering their questions and um, as mark said you know there's um the government has expedited the process trying to speed it up and you know there could be thirty thousand people in the near future ready to come so we we want to try and be set ready to welcome them Amen. That's right. You know, I mean, people are coming over here too, and and they know this is going to be their new home. This is going to be their new home. They they just need a stepping stone. They just need a roof over their head until you know, and, and some help. You know, let them get settled in. Let them know they've got a safe place to stay. But you know, they're going to be looking for jobs. They're going to be looking for resources. They're going to want to get their place of their own and everything. We're just a little bit of a help, a little bit of a roof absolutely. over their head. Absolutely. I mean, we were talking about what the commitment might be, to to have somebody. Yes. Stay with so them. we're looking at we would like to you know with in in our discussion six months minimum could be to a year um, just in reading the messages from um, from some of the um, Ukrainian people coming they want to work you know they're a, they're a, an independent people that hardworking and that's evident in in what we see happening within their own country so 
they're coming here and they want to be self-sufficient. They want to work. There was one young woman that came to the Carl Place group last week, has been set up with her host family. She started work this week. Wow. I mean, it's incredible. She's just left a war torn country coming to a whole new country and she's starting work this week. So, and there are um, different organizations in place to help with that, to connect them with jobs. So it's a real uh, coming together and everyone trying to fit the puzzle pieces together. But at the end of the day, we just want to, we want to help and in any way we can. So um, that's our goal. And we're looking for people that want to come alongside us. Also, if you're thinking of being a host family, we would like to have it set up so that there, there is a support family in place. So that if you decide you're taking it on, there's another family that's going to come along or a group of people come alongside you to offer support. Um, if there's need to going to appointments or just whatever, that you're not in this on your own that um, you know there will be support there also in the way of donations uh, we're looking for people to you know for donations right now we're in the midst of finding a, a registered charity that we can flow through with donations because in order for us to set up as a registered charity the timeline is just so long we need to be acting on that much quicker than than that so that's in the works uh, so again if people are wanting to make donations we will have more information on that in the very near future. You know, I, we, we can't even imagine what they're going through. You know, the, the closest comparison I think maybe we can even think of over here is, you know, somebody has lost a house in a fire. You know, mm -hmm. they lost their house. They don't have anything left. These people don't have a country. They don't have their towns. They don't have their neighbors. They don't have their friends, their family. They don't have anything. You know, and we, we, we can't possibly compare, you know, a house fire to that. But I, in my head, this is what I'm just thinking. They've lost everything. And, you know, they're reaching out to us. And if we can help, I mean, we've got to help these people. There's children. There's children, you know. How do you explain to a child that we're not going home tonight? You don't have a home. And just know? for them to know that they're coming into a home where there is safety, yes. security, yes. food, that they can just take a breath and think, where do I go from here? Yeah. And that's yeah. what we're doing is just wanting to surround them with that safety and help them. On, on, on that thought, you know, it, it occurred to me again, what an enormous asset it will be to our community when we bring in eight, 15 children who then join our education system and enrich our education system by sharing the experiences they have with our kids in this community. Uh, that is just such a win for us. And obviously it's an enormous win for these families that will settle into Smith Falls. So the, um, the, the benefits are, are extensive and subtle and uh, multi-layered in terms of how we can help and how we can all benefit each other. That's yeah. right. Yeah, we are so, so lucky, you know, so but let's help these people, you know. Uh, I, when Linda and I were talking earlier, a lot of people go to their cottages for the summer. You've got a house that's sitting here. Like, let, let's help people out, you know, and, and, you know, welcome them into our homes. We, we've got to do something. They've been through an awful lot. So uh, once again, Linda, how do people get a hold of you if they want to help? So they can reach out on our Facebook page, which just go into Smith Falls Welcomes Ukraine and can send a private message there or also our email, which is sfwelcomesukraine at gmail.com. And we will, one of us will be replying to them. Um, I think that as Mark said, in the giving of this and help, we're going to get so much in return. And just hearing um, feedback from people who have already welcomed a family in, they said it's just, it's incredible what, what they're getting in return. It's it's a win-win and that we're going to be able to, to help and at the same time just feel. This is our time. That's right. And we need to step up. That's right. Make a difference. And what a privilege to be able to do that. That's right. That's right. Mark, can I ask you to wrap up the show and say something in Polish? Uh, well, sure. Um, <laughs> dziękuję wszystkich słuchaczów uh, dzisiaj i um, mamy... Um, Chcemy, żebyście zgłosili do nas i żebyście zadzwonili albo przez e-mail do nas i się skontaktowali, i bo zawsze potrzebujemy ochotników. Um, dziękujemy Wam bardzo.